Master. Bonjour. We have seen before how to use nested if statements, meaning that one complete if statement is contained within a broader if statement. The same idea can be applied to loops. Things can get a little complicated when we start nesting for loops, while loops, and branching statements. The key thing to remember is that MATLAB is processing one line of code at a time. Here we see an example of a for loop nested inside of another for loop. While the inner loop is being processed, no changes will take place involving variables in the outer loop. In this example, BB and X can change multiple times while AA is held constant. The complete tracking table is shown over here. In this case, there are two index variables, AA and BB, and one other changing variable, X. These blanks in the AA column are intended to show that AA is not changing during these steps. For example, here it still equals 2, and here it still equals 3. Walking through this step by step, we see x is first assigned the value 0. At this outer for statement, we know immediately that aa will equal 1, then 2, then 3. However, we can't be sure yet if there will be any blanks. So we'd start by just filling in a 1 in this row. The next for statement says that bb will range from 1 to 1. In other words, we will only go through this loop a single time. And at the center, x equals x plus 1, so the original 0 value gets incremented to 1. Now the inner loop is ended, the outer loop is ended, and we return to the top. AA takes on its next value of 2. Now the inner for statement says BB will range from 1 to 2. So I can fill in both of those slots in the table. When bb equals 1, x gets incremented. When bb equals 2, x gets incremented again. Now we end the loops and return to the top. aa takes on its next value of 3. Now the inner for statement says bb will range from 1 to 3. So I can fill in those three slots in the table. Each time through these three iterations of the inner loop, bb is incremented. And finally, we have run through all values of the outer index vector, and we are done with the code. As I mentioned before, these loops look complicated when swallowed all at once, but each individual step is rather simple. This next example is less academic and has more of a purpose, building a multiplication table. It follows a similar structure to the last example, a for loop inside of a for loop. But there are a couple of key differences. First, the central command is using array indexing to change specific indices within a matrix. Second, each time the inner loop is complete, this sentence will be printed in the command window. Let's see this in action in MATLAB. I have the windows arranged differently so that we can see all the components changing together. First, I'll run the full script so you can see the overall process. We are prompted for the size of the table by this input command. I'll enter 4 to keep it small. Then the for loops are processed quickly. I can see these update sentences that are printed. I can also see the final product, pun intended, in the variable editor, a nice 4x4 multiplication table. Now I will use a debugging tool called a breakpoint to allow us to move step by step through the loops. By clicking on the dash next to the code line number, a red breakpoint appears. This means that every time the code reaches this line, it will pause before processing. I run the script and enter a size of 4 like before. Then the code is processed up to the breakpoint. In the workspace, I can see what the current values of the variable are, just like in our tracking tables. In the variable editor, I have pulled up the variable name table. Currently, it is a 4x4 zeros matrix. Now I can predict what will happen when I run this next line. Row equals 1 and column equals 1, so this statement would first multiply 1 times 1 and then store that result to index 1 comma 1 in the table. I click continue and we see that this is exactly what happens. Now we are paused again. Row still equals 1 because we haven't left the inner loop. Call has been updated to 2, so this command performs 1 times 2 and assigns the result into index 1, 2. 
I click continue a couple more times and see the numbers fill into the multiplication table one by one. Now for a little change. Call currently equals 4. The center command will be processed like before, but then the inner loop is complete, which means the sentence will be printed and the loop will return to the top. Now we are paused again, but row has been updated to 2 since it is the second time through the outer loop. Call currently equals 1 because this is our first time through the inner loop on this iteration. So this command will now assign a value into index 2 comma 1. This process is then repeated many times. Each time I click continue we can see a new index is filled in. Each time a row is complete, a sentence is printed in the command window. And eventually, we compute each value in the entire multiplication table. The beauty of this method is that it can be expanded to any size of multiplication table. I chose 4x4 four four to keep it small for explaining, but I could easily do a 50x50 50 50 matrix just by requesting that size when prompted. Let's look at one last example this one with a while loop inside a for loop. I have started the tracking table already. S begins as this vector of four zeros. Now the for statement assigns AA to begin at one. It will equal two, three, and four later, but I'm careful to not fill those in yet because I don't know which rows the changes will occur on. Then Q and R are set equal to one. Next is the while loop. I must check the condition. Is Q less than AA? Is 1 less than 1? No, that is false, so this while loop is hopped over this time, and we reach this command at the bottom. Here, the value of R is filled in to the first index of S. This concludes the first iteration of the for loop, so now we update AA to a value of 2, Q and R are reassigned to 1s, and the while condition is checked. Is 1 less than 2? Yes, that's true, so we enter the while loop. Q is incremented, and then R is reassigned the value of 1 times 2. We loop up to check the condition. Is 2 less than 2? No, that is false, so we end the while loop. Now this command takes the current value of R, which is 2, and fills it into the second index of S, giving us this vector. We loop back to the for statement update AA to 3, and reset Q and R to 1. The while loop has two iterations before the condition becomes false. At this point, R equals 6, and that gets assigned to the third index of S. We run through the whole thing one more time with AA equal to 4. Q and R are reset to 1, and then increase as shown within the while loop. Ultimately, R equals 24, and that value is assigned to the final index in S. Nested loops are extremely powerful because they allow us to type in just a few commands to cause a computer to process potentially millions of iterations, allowing us to analyze large data sets or solve intricate problems. Understanding the basic steps detailed in this video opens the door to that power.